Chain Li wakes up among strange people in an unfamiliar place. It seems to him that everyone is having fun around him, fires blazing brightly. The smell of roast meat is delicious. Chain thinks he's at a party in his honor and runs to his new friends. He's popular, he's a waxer. But suddenly he falls and notices that his hands and feet are tied. Suddenly, a display window appears in front of him with conditions written on it. Chain realizes that within 12 hours he will be hunted by primitive people and his task is to survive. If he survives, he will receive a skill and a gift. The countdown is on. The men around the campfire noticed that Chain was awake and approached him. They were about two meters tall and didn't understand what Chain was trying to tell them. Suddenly, Chain remembered the strange hole. And the memories came back to him. He was on a beautiful beach. But here he was after accompanying his rich girlfriend on a shopping trip. Strange men came up to him, and when he asked them how to get out of there, the smallest of them waved a sharpened bone and then threw it at Chain. The bone flew past him, but Chain realized he had to run. However, the second spear hit Chain and the same display window reappeared with a message about surviving for 12 hours and a reward if you were lucky. Then the third spear also struck our hero and he fell and lost consciousness. He woke up already bound in the monster camp. A display window tells him that he has survived. As a reward, Chain received a beginning knowledge of the language of the hosts of this world, a map, and a beautiful battle axe. Listening to the conversations, he realized that this was a primitive world, so he would be able to survive and create his civilization. He will be able to get stronger by pumping up his skills and getting more and more rewards. Chain gains strength and a battle axe, break the ropes that bound him, and demands that the savages who have decided to eat him recognize themselves as God. But the primitive people do not know what God is, and their leader pounces on Shane, trying to strike him with a bone spear. If defeated, Shane faces the loss of his battle axe. And without an axe, he can't survive. Losing is impossible, but the savage is so strong waxing Zn. After a long fight, Chain chops his opponent's spear. The chieftain is angry, and his tribe stands in a daze. Kill him, shouts the chief, and Chain has to flee again. The first of the savages who caught up with Chain rushes at the hero, Chain swings his axe, but the attacker suddenly runs away in terror. The whole tribe flees after him. How formidable I am he thinks Chain, but the display window kindly informs him that behind him is a saber-toothed tiger and the guy only needs to rid the tribe of the evil predator. For which he will get points and the appreciation of the savages. Once again, the lad flees, fleeing from the formidable extinct creature himself. But running away indefinitely is impossible. Tiger will still catch up. He's playing with Chain like a cat with a mouse. Only fire can scare him. The boy runs to the fire. Neither dense thickets nor trees can slow the run of the primitive killer. But there's a campfire ahead. With an incredible somersault the hero reaches the fire and gets a burning head in the eye, a kitty cat. Tiger is annoyed but still strong, angry, and not going to back down. Suddenly a vague sound tears the space. Something much larger than a tiger is moving towards our fighters. Who is it? Tiger and Chain froze. But the tiger did not wait for the unknown man to appear, but turned around and left the battlefield. Chain got two points for banishing the animal and decided to leave as soon as possible. Now his strength and agility had increased. Quickly he ran to the tribe. The chief was very surprised that such a small fellow had not been eaten by the tiger. And Chain realized that despite his feet, the savages were not afraid of him. Why not? Then a young girl came up to Shane and began to hug his legs. She called him a benefactor, a savior, and the whole tribe chose Shane as their chief. In this way, they expressed their sympathy and appreciation. In his thoughts, the new leader felt himself to be an emperor. A display window informed him that the stage was complete and he received another point and three more medications. Points chain added to his physical fitness, and the medicine was very useful, it healed wounds, but with a shelf life of only one day. Tiger managed to scratch Chain's back, and to keep the medicine flowing, he healed his wound. The wound was gone. The savages were once more convinced of the power of their new chief. 
Our hero decided to get to know his subjects and started with the former chief, who revealed that his name was Shurgu and he was the best warrior of the tribe. Little Agen was a good hunter. Huangshu is the strongest. But Huangshu's sister, Deda, objected that she was the strongest, and she was also good at throwing stones. Sha climbs trees and picks fruit. And Ayu had two children and was only concerned with them. Hunter Xiong could find any road in the forest. Shane tried to tell the tribe about civilization, but the people did not know what it was. The promise that they would eat meat every day, on the other hand, excited them. So, the main quest was activated ahead of schedule. Our hero had to build primitive people dwellings and increase the number of people up to 50 people. The deadline was 18 days. The reward was more points and a treasure chest with inheritance. There were about 15 people in the tribe. Shane realized that the next 18 days would not be easy, so he decided to rest before the hard work. At night, Shane was hungry, and he remembered that there was meat roasting on the fire where he had fought the tiger. The boy remembered the monster, but it wouldn't be there forever, would it? By the fire, Shane found not only roast meat but also a hare caught in a snare. Now the whole tribe could be fed. On the way back, Shane fell into a strange hole. But it was the footprint of a huge beast. Could it be a Tyrannosaurus, the most feared creature of antiquity? There's no time to think. We must feed the savages. Fighting over meat among primitive people impresses Chain. He has much to teach them. The one who hunts with the chief will get the food. All primitives agree to go hunting. But there's still a house to build. So Chain tells the savages what a family is. A family is when close people live together like the roots of a tree that nourish its own and leaves. Shane draws a settlement plan with calculations of proximity to water, firewood, and safety. The area should be located between the river and the forest to make it convenient to hunt and gather useful berries and herbs. Hunter Xiong knows all the terrain around him and can give you a hint. But the area is dangerous who bulls live there. Chain decides that the bulls are meat, milk, and pets, and leads his tribe to a new place. Little Xiao Xiong shows the way and leads the tribe to a beautiful place. But for some reason, he is wary and asks everyone to keep quiet. Shane opens the map, there's no better place to settle, mountains on three sides, the sea on one side. The display opens with pictures of local vegetation, useful, poisonous, and animals, tasty and dangerous. And there's no mention of black bulls. Maybe the kid got it wrong. But suddenly a huge black tree begins to move, or is it something else? Chain is horrified, a monster emerges from the forest. Could it be a bull? The tribe is very much frightened and in shock. Chain goes scouting, he's very scared. They could all die. The bulls are three times the size of humans, but they haven't noticed the aliens yet and are pinching grass. Chain decides to find the calf and try to tame it. But the calf screams and calls for help from the adult bulls. The whole herd of bulls run to the calf's aid and want to chase Chain away. Once again Chain escapes, he decides to run across the river, but the river does not stop the angry herd. The tribe watches their chief and everyone is sure it's a cunning plan by their clever king. Chain is trapped, cliffs ahead. But his new abilities don't let him down and the guy jumps onto a tiny ledge. One of the bulls fails to slow down and crashes into a rock. The rest of the bulls remain to guard the violator of their peace. Shane decides to climb up. When he reaches the top, he takes in the magnificent scenery and decides that this will be his domain. The game is just beginning. Meanwhile, the tribe is concerned about the king's absence. Former Chief Shurgu wants to take the magic axe, but then Chain shows up. He says the tribe will live here, cuts down a massive tree with an axe, and teaches the savages how to make a spear from a pointed stick. Chain's current stats are Physical Form 2, Strength 3, Agility 2, Authority 0, Technology 1, Possessions 0. Chain teaches the savages how to throw a spear and his spear pierces a rock. The savages are very impressed and all make their spears. The jousting begins and Chain is attacked by two of them, but he defeats them. Chain explains to the tribe that they need to practice their fighting and spear-throwing skills. 
He draws a target and promises to give the spear to the first person who hits the target. Shergu misses, Hunter Shun misses too, the others also fail, and there's only one left who hasn't tried yet. Only one hit exactly in the center of the target and received a spear as a gift from the chief. A large beast is coming towards the forest. The tribe led by Shane prepared for battle. A giant black boar appears in the clearing. At the command of their chief, the savages surround the bull and Shane rushes at it with his spear. With his power he stops the animal and tells the soldiers to throw spears at the bull's vulnerable spots. Agen and Lan Guchu throw spears, the boar is wounded but not killed. Chain's spear breaks, but Lan stops the boar with a deft stroke of his spear. Shergu and his companions join the fight. Spears fly at the bull. Hunter Xion leaps from a tree onto a boar and strikes it. The beast is enraged and slaps its tail at its sides. He attacks, the tribe scatters, and Chain is left to face the monster alone. A guy kills a boar with his axe. Now the tribe will have plenty of meat and they will have a feast tonight. Chine rewards the hunter Shun and Agen who fought the best. Agen will go with him on all hunts and get a new weapon. Shergu boasts that without him, the chief would not have succeeded. Chain is surprised that his tribe eats raw meat, he's seen meat roasted on a fire, but Dada says that fire is always random and they don't know how to get it. Chain realizes that without fire, no civilization is possible. Using a broken spear, he teaches the tribe how to make fire by friction. Adds sawdust to the hollow in the wood, inserts the spear, and begins to rotate it. The fire is kindled. The tribe welcomes the king. Once again, the table of chains pumped properties appears on the screen, Technology 11. Chain doesn't understand why he needs the technology points, but the display reminds him that the technology points can be used to identify rock art, for which new points will be awarded. Rock art can be used to transmit and retrieve important information. Hunter Xiong reports that the boar killed was a female and there is a den with cubs nearby. Shane gets another quest to domesticate animals. If he succeeds, he will be rewarded with a small treasure chest and a cookbook. Hunter Xion goes with Dada to get piglets, and Shane is going to build a pigsty. He sends men into the forest for branches and wooden trunks. Agen leaves ropes of straw to tie wooden branches together. Shane teaches people how to build a room out of twigs and rope. Finally, the pigsty is built. Savages fight for the right to live in a new home with their king. Shane says this is not a house for people but for pigs. The hunters have brought eight piglets, but Shergu and his friend do not want to give the pigs such a beautiful home. Chain warns them that if they stay living in the pigsty, there will be no room for them in the new houses. Now everyone agrees to wait for the new houses. But the piglets can be eaten. Why raise them, the tribe is perplexed. The chief explains that if the piglets grow and reproduce, there will be meat without hunting. Quest accomplished. The system unlocks a reward a bag of salt and a cookbook with recipes for fried eggplant, lamb, peanuts, and clams. Cooking with recipes can unlock special rewards. On night watch with Shun, Chine asks him if there are any other tribes nearby. Xiong says there are tribes of coconut grove, sea bay, and giant rock. But they are unfriendly. You have to go to them in different directions. The Coconut Grove tribe is the closest, about 40 people, they don't like to fight and walk long distances. Their chief is a woman who is not easy to talk to. The Sibay tribe consists of 30 men, they live by the sea, the sight of them is terrible and they fight and kill each other. The Giant Rock tribe is the most numerous, they live in the mountains, their chief has supernatural powers, and can kill a tiger. Shane decides to go to the Coconut Grove tribe. At this time, Dada sneaks up on Shane and proposes lovemaking. Shane runs away, under the pretext that Shun needs to go to the bathroom. Shine and Shun are sitting in a tree near the sea bay. They spot a dodo bird on the beach, which is being chased by people from the sea bay tribe. The dodo bird is unpalatable but lays eggs well. Two savages quarrel over a bird, threatening to kill each other. Shane thinks that if his tribe and the sea bay tribe unite, they can catch birds together. But Chain's tribe cannot fight the warlike and violent savages. 
Shane decides to get rid of the Black Bulls first and then use the resources to create more powerful weapons. The tribe of Shane rejoices at the return of the king. Shane tasks Shig and the men with practicing spear and stone throwing. And Dadad gathers women to learn how to make stone axes. Having chosen the right stones, Shane teaches them how to sharpen them against a large sharpening stone and tie them to a stick with a rope. Shane gets new points. Dadai made a two-bladed axe. Shane notes that she is a capable student. The display window tells you that you have traveled from the Paleolithic to the Neolithic and activates the ability to reveal people's hidden talents. Now Dada's axe is the model for how weapons should be laid down. 30 spears and the axes are ready. Dada has done the most, the hands of all the women are rubbed, and they demand to be pitted. Men practice throwing a javelin at a moving target. Lan Guchu and Huan Shi won, but they were good as a team. Hei Zhu Jiao, on the other hand, is not accurate, although he is strong. Chain thinks his tribe might fight the Black Bulls tomorrow. He has a secret weapon just in case. All night long, Chain pokes a hole in Big Stone. The system told him that the leaves of trees contain poison of paralytic action if you grind the leaves in a mortar you can smear spears with poison. Now the tribe is ready to fight the monsters. The women stay at home and the men go to fight. Chain devises a plan where the whole tribe climbs the cliffs and he goes to the rear of the black bulls and lures them out into the open. Plan a risky king may suffer. Chen taunts the black bulls by throwing rocks at them and the enraged monsters lunge at him. Running to the open area Shane gives the command for the tribe to attack the bulls. Shergu and his companions throw poison spears at the bulls, but the monsters are not defeated. One of the monsters pounces on Shane, but Shane, thanks to his acquired agility, jumps onto the rock. But he has no strength to hold on and is about to fall down. However, Shergu comes to the rescue and pulls his king upstairs. The attack continues Chain unlocks Shergu's warlord talent. The poison has worked on the bulls, they are immobilized. But the rest of the herd comes to their aid. The herd must not be allowed to fend off immobile flanks. However, there are only 28 copies left. And Little Shun sees 20 bulls. Chain tells the tribe how he is going to defeat the bulls. The three immobile monsters are the bait. The strongest leader will come out to save his kin, and that leader is the one to be hunted. Chain was right a monster came out of the forest. A huge monster came into the clearing. The bulls attacked. At the command of the leader. The bulls beat the rock with their horns the stone wall cracked. From the jolt, Dada falls off the cliff. Huangshu and Shane rush to his aid. Dada lies unconscious. Men put out a replica prepared to repel the bull's attack. Shergu commands the tribe to defend their king. The bulls attacked. The men of the tribe repel the attack with their spears. And Shane chops the bulls with his axe. Some bulls are defeated. There are too many of them. The tribe fails to kill one of the bulls, but suddenly the monsters start to retreat. It starts raining and King Bull comes into the clearing. He's huge, strong. His roar deafens the tribe, a sound wave so strong that everyone has lost their fighting spirit. Chain decides to distract the monster's attention and tells the tribe to move away, taking the wounded Dido with them. Chain engages in combat with the beast. Thanks to his agility and axe power, he attacks, but the enemy is so strong that Chain turns to flee. He sees a crevice in the rock and tries to hide there. The bull is approaching. The 64 tribes prepare to do battle with the monster. However, spears cannot pierce the thick skin of an animal. Chain was seriously injured. However, Shergu does not give up and leads the men in an attack on the monster. The bull tries to trample it. With a sound wave, he rolls the savages to the ground. A wounded chain enters the battle. He wounds the monster with his magic axe. He gives the command to launch poison copies into the wound. The bull tries to run away, but the poison stops him. Tribe triumphs in victory. But the other bulls don't scatter. They're waiting for something. The bull king comes to life and pounces on chain enraged. 
Chain's death is imminent. The bull launches a spear fragment at Chain, but Data gets in his way and is wounded. At a critical moment, Chain feels the emergence of an unstoppable force. This force allows him to chop the monster in half with his axe. Chain challenges the other bulls, but they do not risk a fight. The system warns Chain that he is dying. The warning is repeated. Chain passes out before he can get the medicine. The first thing Chain sees after waking up is a smiling Ayu. She tells Shane that after he drove the bulls away, the tribe moved to another land and built a tent for the king. Shane is concerned about the health of his warriors. Lu Tang has already recovered. Adida has been sick for a long time, but the tribe has a magic medicine called Shana, and she will be well soon. Shane has been unconscious for four days. There are eleven days left until the end of the quest. Shane has no fighting power or restraining force left, but luckily the tribe has managed to move to a good place. Weak Shane cannot show himself to his subjects, so he gives them a task and does not let them into the hut. Lu Tang gets a battle axe, he needs to bring the bull king's skull and skin. Ayu, who saw Shane in a helpless state, enters the hut and is tasked to enter into negotiations with the Coconut Grove tribe and convince them to join Hein's tribe. To do so, China's tribe must show its strength. A was suitable for negotiation because the Coconut Grove tribe is matriarchal and women will be easier to communicate with. Besides, she's the only one who knows Chain's weakness, but she won't tell anyone. A and Shun go to the Coconut Grove tribe. The queen of the tribe is a beautiful woman. But her beauty is deceptive. She ate all those who suited her. A and Shun hide in a thicket but they are found by Coconut Grove warriors and brought to the queen. Shun says that they are ambassadors of King Chine and have brought gifts from the Coconut Grove tribe. The cruel queen orders that Aya be turned into a slave and that Shun be killed. A offers the queen the meat of a mountain bull, for which it is necessary to unite the forces of both tribes. The queen disagrees because the bulls are not their enemies and the fact that the Chena tribe chased them away is a lie. Ayu suggests that the queen pay a visit to King Shane and make sure it is real. The queen goes to the tribe of Shane. On the road they meet Shergu, who is carrying a log to build a house. The queen of the coconut grove and her subjects do not know what it is to build a house. Shane meets the queen wearing the mantle of a slain bull's hide and a crown made from its horns. Queen impressed. Shane suggests that the queen stock up on the meat of the black bulls whose carcasses lie behind the king's hut. It is difficult to cut an animal carcass with primitive tools. Then King Shane chops up the bull with his axe. The queen is amazed at the power of the new weapon and asks Shane to tell how they defeated the whole herd. Shane replies that if they have an understanding, he'll tell them everything. Then he sends the queen back. Ao gives the Coconut Grove tribe some stone axes, but the queen refuses. After taking the meat, the queen goes into the forest and meets her spies, who tell her that they have seen buildings called houses. Saw a pigsty and learned that the Chena tribe knew how to make fire. The queen is amazed at these skills. But the spies saw no tribal warriors, only a few children and old men. The queen is angry that the spies did not find out where the tribe's warriors are and punish them severely. At this time, Shane is exhausted because his wounds are making themselves known. Shane's talent for eloquence has been activated. Ayu falls more and more in love with the king. Shane thanks Aya and Shun for their work. He has the second part of a plan to annex the Coconut Grove tribe. Shane is tired he is not well. There are eleven days left until the end of the quest, in that time he can't even recover. The healing potion is scarce and his battle axe became the mythological Pangu axe. Pangu, according to Chinese mythology, this is the first man on earth. On the display appear the characteristics of the axe to activate which requires the blood sacrifice that was when Chain killed the bull. Display gives Chain the new skill of world creation. After unlocking this skill Chain's power will be depleted and he may die. In this way one must use the skill of creating the world at the right time no sooner and no later. Shane calls Shun over to give him a new assignment. Shun is a good hunter, so he needs two days to find a herd of black bulls and report it to his chief. 
The days to complete the quest are getting shorter and shorter. Shane decides to make gifts to his tribe and alone he crafts stone tips, a stone whistle, and a drinking horn, for which he receives technology points. Bone whistle he gives to Shergu, who will be comfortable commanding his warriors, the stone tips will be given to the whole tribe and the drinking horn will be given to Shun. A walks into Chains with the news that the new house has been built. Chain goes out to the tribe and sees a beautiful house with a straw door. Display tells the chain that, for building the house he gets 10 technology points. Chain realizes that the tribe has evolved from being savages who ate raw meat to building houses and using fire. Shun reports that he has found a herd of black bulls. Now we can begin the second part of the plan to annex the Coconut Grove tribe. Shurguai Shun receives new assignments. The Coconut Grove tribe, led by the queen, comes to the Chena tribe. Chain is still too weak to go out. The queen is struck by the beauty of Shane's new home. She offers Ayu to join her tribe and serve her. Ayu refuses. He tells the queen that her tribe can take the meat and that the warriors of the Shane tribe can help cut up the meat with their new weapons. The queen walks in on Shane praising his palace and attacking Shane. Shane is scared, but he doesn't show it. At this time Ayu enters Chena's palace and calls for everyone to begin the banquet. She unties the chief. Chena tribe making a fire and roasting meat. Shane sprinkles salt on the meat. It makes the meat taste so much better. The queen is delighted. Meanwhile, the hunters find a herd of black bulls and fight them. Shun sees the new herd leader and strikes him with his spear. Under Chain's plan, the hunters drive a herd of black bulls into the territory of the Coconut Grove tribe. At this time, the whole tribe is eating meat at Shane's visit. Suddenly messengers arrive and inform the queen that their territory is under attack by black bulls. The whole tribe runs to fight. The Coconut Grove tribe has slingshots but they cannot penetrate the thick skin of the animals. Bulls win. The queen enters the fray. She attacks the leader of the bulls with her whip, but this only makes the monster furious. The queen loses her whip, she is in danger. Chain comes to the rescue. Now he must face the leader of the herd. All of Chain's tribe is helping him. Shun saddles the bull and rides it. Shane suggests that the queen unite the tribes and guarantee her people's safety. After a brief moment of deliberation, the queen orders her subjects to retreat northward. The hunters of the Chena tribe are left with the hunters of the Coconut Grove tribe. All together they attack the bulls. The queen and Ayu return to the Chena tribe, where they and the wounded are treated. The queen is depressed, and Ayu promises to take care of her people. Shane's plan to conquer the Coconut Grove tribe seems flawless. The next day at camp all is quiet. There are eight days left until the end of the quest. However, the queen does not agree to the unification of the tribes. Shane tells her that unification will benefit both tribes they will teach the people of the Coconut Grove tribe how to build houses, make fire, and protect them from the cruelty of the sea tribe and the power of the mountain tribe. The queen challenges Chain to a fight, if he wins she will accept all his terms. But the queen is wounded as is Chain. That's why they're putting up fighters for themselves. Shergu will fight for Chain. And for the queen, the warrior Ayun. The battle has begun. Ayun staggers Shiga with several punches but they are too weak. Shergu prepares to kill the warrior but is attacked by another Amazon. The conflict is heating up. One of the warriors attacks Chain, but she is struck by Lu. That wasn't part of Chain's plan. The Coconut Grove tribe is going all out. They just need the queen's orders. Shane the only thing left to do is to take the queen hostage. The queen orders her subjects to stop because she realizes they are trapped, but this battle is lost. Knowing of Chain's supernatural powers, she asks to be rescued by her warrior. The medicine has only one serving left. But Shane gives this medicine and the queen is amazed at the miracle of healing. She agrees to unite the tribes on one condition. She and Chain get married. Chain agrees. Chain has now officially created his tribe and must name it. 
Now his characteristics have changed, the population of his tribe is 46 people, the characteristic of civilization is Stone Age and the possession of the territory is about a kilometer. Until the conditions of the quest are fulfilled, there are four more people to be accepted into the tribe. Chain names his tribe the Newcomer Tribe. Now he needs to expand the population as soon as possible. He will have to subdue the tribes of the Sea Gulf. By chance, Chain overhears two women talking about what will happen at the wedding ceremony. The queen will kill him and eat him. Chain is horrified. At this time Dadai comes to him asking about the wedding ceremony. Chain says he rushed into it and wants to call off the engagement. The next day he sees how well the two tribes work together. One of the queen's subjects shows Chain where the queen bathes. The queen is flirtatious with Shane, saying she is healthy and her name is Xiao Wang. The previous queen was banished and they ate their partners to gain more power. However, the queen is not going to eat her partner. But the queen warns that if anyone offends her, she will maim them. There are seven days left until the end of the quest right now you need to take prisoners to complete the quest. Shane goes south to the sea and leaves Shiga in his place. On the beach, Chain sees the bodies of the Sea Bay tribesmen. Chain examines the bodies on the coast. They have huge claws on their fingers and the shapes of the wounds look very much like scratches from those claws. It was probably an internecine battle. At this time, Shoni comes running to chase and reports that they are being attacked by a bunch of crazies from the Sea Bay tribe. Chain hurries back. The tribe prepares for battle. Sea Bay tribal warriors are not afraid of spear blows and feel no pain. They advance. The battle begins. The queen and her subjects come to the rescue. She thinks they are monsters, not men. Everyone goes on the attack. The queen brings her opponent to the ground. But the monster breaks free and the queen continues to fight it. Monster wins, but Chain comes to the queen's defense, the enemy withstands Chain's blow and his tribe's warriors come to his rescue. They strike the monster with their spears and chain rushes to the queen's aid again. The leader of the Sea Gulf tribe goes one-on-one -on -one to fight the change. The people of the Sea Bay tribe have lost the ability to talk and communicate. They are strong and evil. Even though chain is stronger than normal humans, he cannot defeat his opponent. A monster captures chain but a strong cloak saves chain from being killed. In a leap the monster tears off Chain's cloak, but having torn the cloak no longer attacks, takes some of the bloody cloak and leaves. You can see that the smell of blood attracts monsters like scary sharks. Chain gives the task of bringing three piglets and releasing them to the sea. Shun strikes the piglets with his spear and the monsters gather around the carcasses. While the monsters tear the piglets apart and eat them, Chain prepares another attack. But the monsters suddenly fall. The poison with which the spears are greased has poisoned the meat of the piglets. All the attackers are captured and put in cages. They are well guarded. One of the prisoners wakes up and asks for help. Chain comes to the captives, and they all ask for water the people of the newcomer tribe give water and the captives regain the ability to communicate. The chief of the Sea Bay tribe wants to ask questions of Ayu and Chain. It turns out they were attacked by the mountain tribe and mistakenly came to take revenge on the newcomer tribe. It turns out that the people of the Gulf of the Sea tribe have lost their memories. The leader's name is Heihu, they live near the coast, often fought with each other, and raised their children. But one day the men of the mountain tribe came to kill them. A fight broke out, and the chief was stunned. And he woke up in a cage. What happened to the rest of his tribe, he does not know. Ayu finds an unfamiliar plant on the ground. The identification system identifies it as an intoxicant whose smoke causes hallucinations. Heihu tells Shane that the chief of the mountain people has divine power. It seems to be the power of a demon. He caused the sea people to slaughter each other and caused them to hallucinate. Probably the leader of the mountain tribe found out about the newcomer tribe and decided to take him out by turning the sea tribe into zombies. Chain asks the system what his characteristics are and realizes that his strength is not enough to defeat the Mountain King. While talking to Ayu, Chain confesses that he doesn't know when the next attack will be. 
and asks Heihu to remember the details about the leaves of the stupefying plant. Heihu remembers the smell he smelled when he fought the hill tribe. Heihu asks Chain for permission to fight alongside the newcomer tribe to take revenge on the mountain people. Shane fears that the sea tribe may get out of control again if they smell the poisonous odor. The chief promises that won't happen and then Shane offers him his plan. The people of the sea tribe are released from their cages and since the system's task is completed ahead of time, Shane will be rewarded with a large gift. The system shows that the population of the newcomer tribe is 68. Shane can increase his strength. Shane increases his power, but it sprawls out and finds no outlet. He is now stronger than every human on the planet. System provides him with gifts large treasure chest, a large gift bag, and a rock painting. There is iron ore in a large treasure chest and now you have to figure out how to create a furnace that can smelt iron ore. The beginner tribe can leapfrog through the Bronze Age right into the Iron Age. Rock art is a product of culture and its level of understanding depends on a person's IQ. Shane deciphers the rock inscription and gains a sense of shame which is a decisive step in the development of culture. Shane wondered how to deal with the hill tribe. Ayu proposes a plan to him, which consists of her going to negotiate with the hill tribe. But Shane disagrees because the mountain tribe is too treacherous. He thinks they should build high walls stock up on provisions and prepare for defense. Who join the tribe will be taught how to build houses, gather food, and make traps. Ayu don't know what traps are. Shane explains to her that they are needed to protect the tribe. As the tribe's population has increased dramatically, we need to think about stocking up on food. Shane wants to teach people how to make jerky. Everyone in the tribe notices Shane's changed appearance. Shane makes his warriors make traps and memorize their locations. Memorizing where the traps are is a difficult task, but the warriors are capable of it. Shane is tired and lies down to rest, but his thoughts keep him awake. There is a lot of unfinished work. Imperceptibly he falls asleep and he dreams of a beautiful party. He wakes up to Shurgu and is led to show him the traps. Shane shows him how to disguise the traps. Shows how to make a suspended trap net. And goes to bed again but on the way, he hears strange noises from the houses where the women live. Walks in and finds out that women who have gained a sense of shame are embarrassed to come out in their revealing outfits. While digging a trap pit, Shurgu finds rocks that burn, which turn out to be saltpeter that can be used to make gunpowder. Shane realizes that his possibilities have become limitless. The newcomers are doing well. New houses and watchtowers with beacons have been built. The people of the sea tribe are proving to be excellent fishermen, and the women are stocking up on fish. But there is a shortage of men after the allocation of men to guard the signal towers. Shane is thinking about how to attract new people to the tribe. But suddenly he sees fire from the signal tower. The tower is under attack. Shane announces a general assembly. Shane runs toward the tower. Tower guardian says the traps went off near the tribe. Shane notices a trapped attacker hanging in the trap. He goes to check the trap and sees that the queen has been caught in it. Shane laughs at the queen and lets her go. Queens tells Shane that she heard a conversation between the sea tribe people that they want to go to the beach and catch fish and shellfish to eat them and get more energy, but on the way to the beach, you can meet a pack of jackals that you are dangerous. The queen came to warn Shane about it. He decides to beef up security, open the road to the beach, and deal with the jackals. In addition, Shane wants to develop poultry farming and needs dodo birds that lay eggs well and live on the beach. The queen fears that the place where the newcomer tribe lives is not safe. It may be attacked by mountain tribes who know how to use poisonous smoke. Shane suggests dividing the people by settling some on the beach and establishing an information exchange. That way they can support each other. The queen agrees. At this time jackals attack the warriors of the sea tribe. The sea tribe joins the fight. Shane and his friend join them. The chief of the sea tribe deals with the jackals. But there are too many of them. They try to attack Shane, but Shane has strength and easily handles the jackals. The jackals flee. The jackals escape. 
and the chief of the sea tribe leads Shane to a rock on which to place a fortress. After three days, Shane masters a bow, for which he gets five technology points. At this time Shion comes in and reports that there was no sign of people in the north, but he found a lake in which a strange large creature was swimming. Besides the mountains surrounding the lake are very scary. Ehu says that giants live on them. The system indicates to Chain that a side quest has been activated. He needs to see with his own eyes the giant and there is no time limit. Chain wonders why only needs to see a giant, but decides he can make the giants into helpers and agrees to accept the quest. Ao informs Chain that the preparations for the wedding ceremony have already been finalized. Two days later, Chain makes a wooden shield upholstered in bullhide. Now he has 62 points. Chain is rushing to the wedding ceremony. The whole tribe salutes him. Now the two tribes will be the newcomer tribe has a queen. But the queen is not happy that immediately after the wedding chain must leave to look for giants. She wants to go with him but one of the kings must stay in the tribe. Shane gives the queen a slingshot, a throwing weapon, and gives her the task of teaching people how to use it. Shine, Lushur, Ayun, and Heihu go to the mountains. Heihu says that as a child he saw a monster in the lake who swallowed an entire leopard. Chain dreams of meeting the giant. Lu Shur narrates that there were many men in their tribe until they met the giant who's killed a lot of people. Now everyone is afraid of the giant. In the woods, Chain notices many plants. One plant is the bread cereal millet. System gives the following task new mission of Shane, it is necessary to plant grains of different plants and harvest. The term of execution is 180 days. Shane realizes that it is possible to enter the age of farming. We need to find clay and make dishes. The following plant is identified by the system as nettles, which can be used to make rope, cloth, and paper. Shane decides to harvest on the way back. But suddenly they are surrounded by jackals. Who persecuted them? Chain is going to get rid of the jackals. Begins the battle with the enraged jackals. Chief of the Sea Tribe fights bravely. Ayun also shows herself to be a brave warrior. A pack of jackals runs away from the victorious humans. But they have to be caught up so they don't pose a threat. During the chase, Ayun falls into a trap. Huge flowers can catch living things. The rest of the team was captured by the flower. Chain and his battle axe come to the rescue. He chops the thick stalks. But he is attacked by bolder jackals. Chain fights off the jackals. But can't fight out of the flower and with them. Chain finds two saltpeter stones in your pocket. Sets them on fire and throws them into the flower. The flower burns and releases its captives. But a great fire breaks out. That threatens people. Shane Troop runs to the water to escape hyenas and fire. Wild jackals catch up with the fugitives. Shane helps Ayun escape and is thrown into the fray by a jackal. Ayun strikes a jackal with an accurate shot from his bow. She has the archery talent activated. Time is running out and the fire's getting worse. Shane carries Ayun, who has twisted her leg, on her shoulders. Finally they reach the lake and manage to escape. Crossing to the other side of the thicket, Shine and Heihu find a a jackal's den of little puppies. System issues a new mission to tame wild beasts and make jackal hunting dogs. Chain accepts the assignment. Group advances into the woods. A sound comes from the thicket and a monster appears. It's a huge man-eating bear. Who's going to attack people? Chain distracts the bear and orders the others to hide. Chain's battle axe attacks the bear. But bear is too huge. Then Chain decides to lure the bear away from his men. A bear chases Chain into the woods. But a saber-toothed tiger comes running towards them. Chain was pinned on both sides by dangerous beasts. Now everything will depend on his strength of speed and power. He can use the power of the battle axe. But will be greatly weakened thereafter. 
Pondering the system reports the chain is in extreme danger. The system enables extreme escape mode. Shane gains 20 dexterity points. He will be deducted after the end of the mode. Chain instantly leaves the battlefield. And the bear and the saber-toothed tiger fight each other. But the man is more attractive to them and the two of them attack. Chain escapes with only 325 seconds left. Until he loses his agility. Finally, he reaches the snowy mountains, leaving the predators far behind him. And begins to climb to the top. There are 142 seconds left until the end of the dexterity action. On the summit, Shane sees an Iceman, a giant from the legend. The system assigns a second test to attack giants. Shane is angry, it can't be done. He throws a stone at the giant. But only annoyed his pet dinosaur. System accepts Chain's attempt as a successful attack and Chain gets 10 points. But assigns the following test. To kill the giant alone. For which Chain gets 100 points. The irritated giant awoke. He's a danger to Chain. Chain is at a loss he decides to return to the tribe to think things over. The whole team goes home. The queen is informed that Chain has returned. The queen goes to meet her husband. The queen says the jackal cubs are already in the tribe. Shun will look after them. The queen is angry at Shane for working too hard and not getting enough rest. Shane feels that the queen is pressuring him, but he needs to rest. System shows the characteristics he lost 4 points, but gained 10 so it's no loss. Without hesitation, Shane increases dexterity to its maximum value. Shane distributes the points received and brings all its characteristics to a critical value. He increases his strength and his body changes his clothes become too small for him. He needs to develop intelligence so he can get more random assignments with high rewards. Shane falls asleep quickly and quietly. The next day, the tribe is fine. Men fishing in the sea. Women sew clothes for the whole tribe. Learn to throw stones with a sling. Shane is satisfied with the lives of his subjects. The queen shows him the troops formed to protect the tribe. Lou, despite his wounds, sits in the signal tower. It's been four days. During this time, Shane invented math and writing, for which he received 20 technology points. System opens a technology store for him. Shane can spend points on practical things, the store has a saltpeter, medicine, a large pot, and a seasoning kit. Shane decides to buy. Shane buys a big iron cauldron. Not just for cooking, but also because it is of iron and can be used to make armor or a shield. Shane invents his first furnace, boils water in the cauldron and gets 10 more technology points. Shane makes fish soup and gets 10 more points. Shergu brings salt from the saltworks. Shane feeds the whole tribe fish soup. His people like the soup. They've never tried that. System opens a tech store. And Shane recalls wanting to teach the tribe math and farming. He needs millet seeds that grow in the forest. Messenger reports that another trap has been triggered. Shane goes to see who's trapped. A wounded jackal lies in a trap. Shane realizes it's the female they took the cubs from. Shergu and the king of the sea tribe raise a jackal. And refer to hungry cubs. Shane goes back to the millet seeds and gathers them. At the same time, they are gathering healing herbs and want to leave for camp. But on their way back they encounter the bear again. But someone is hunting him. The bear is badly hurt. Mountain tribe hunters run out into the clearing and chase a bear. Hai who is out for revenge on the hill tribe. Chain forbids doing so and advises against letting hate cloud the mind. Mountain tribe hunters are too many and attacking them rashly. Need to wait for the right time. Taking advantage of being out of sight, Chain's squad observes the hill tribe hunters. A bear is defeated by hunters. Shane learns that the mountain tribe poisoned the bear in the beginning and wants to finish it off. The mountain tribe is armed with blades made of obsidian. 
system gives Chain a new mission to save a dying bear, for which he will be awarded new points and bear sympathy. Chain isn't sure if he should do this kind of work, but it's a rare assignment that will get him a lot of points. A mountain tribe chief is going to kill a bear. But Chain and his battle axe engage him in combat. Shane's axe versus King's obsidian blade. Who will win? The forces of the opponents are equal. Reason advises the fighters to stop and negotiate. System says Bear was poisoned and wounded. Needs to stop the bleeding and neutralize the poison within 10 minutes. The mountain men are very angry that their spoils have been taken from them. Hey who dreams of avenging his people? The two tribes get into a fight. While Chain is using the medicine for the bear. All of Chain's associates are wounded. And the chief of the mountain tribe threatens them. They must either leave or be defeated. The chief of the sea tribe doesn't agree with this he wants to fight to the end. To heal the bear with six minutes left. Looks like there's a fight to be had. The king of the hill tribe challenges King Shane to battle. Shane agrees to the duel. But suddenly the king of the hill tribe says that it is not his manner to attack a few men in a mob. And the battle will be rescheduled for another day. Whereupon the mountain tribe withdraws. The subjects of the king of the hill tribe are surprised. But the king explains to them that he didn't bring any poisonous plants with him. And his supernatural power will soon run out. Shane is not an easy fighter, so the king wants to learn more about Shane and his tribe. The poison that poisoned the bear can be neutralized with honeysuckle and burdock. The whole team tries to help bear. With one second left to heal and the system reports that the poison is no longer lethal and the danger has been eliminated. The bear's life is in no danger. Heihu suggests catching up with the Mountain King's tribe and taking revenge. But Chain refuses because he might lose people. He is sure that the Mountain King will come to them himself and they need to save their strength. Chain stays behind to watch the bear and builds a fire. He roasts meat but is surrounded by jackals. They want tasty meat too. They dare not approach the fire. The bear woke up, he's hungry. And Shane fed him with meat. The system reports that the goal has been reached and Shane gets extra points. For extra points, Chain wants to get himself an increase in fitness to a critical value. Bear is grateful to Chain for saving him. He drives away the jackals and brings their bodies to Shane as a gift. Shane decides to use a bear as a riding animal. He calls him Suda. The bear is very pleased. Chain and his bear are on the trail of a mountain tribe. They enter the bamboo forest. And Chain realizes you can make firecrackers out of bamboo. What would scare the mountain tribe? The card reveals the place where there is a volcano, in the vent of which you can find sulfur. Nearest volcano in the giant's lair. Shane turns around and follows north. He reaches the lake in which the monster dwells. Suddenly, a monster pops up from the bottom of the pond. It's a huge prehistoric Tyrannosaurus. Is wearing a Tyrannosaurus collar, most likely an escaped pet of the giant. Shane and his bear go around the Tyrannosaurus and heading for the snowy peaks. The dense snow gets thicker and thicker bear walks forward, and Shane follows. In a bear track, Shane discovers sulfur. Hooray for not having to go to the giant's lair. Shane on the bear returns to the newcomer tribe after gathering a supply of bamboo in the grove. Everyone is delighted. Shane gives the bamboo to Ayu. The king of the sea tribe informs Shane that a huge monster has appeared in the sea, is violently rampaging and Shane goes to the beach to assess the situation. The huge monster can't be handled by hunters. System identifies the animal as an ichthyosaur, a large marine fish. She must be pulled ashore and Shane and the bear get into a fight with the beast. Chain falls into the monster's mouth, unclenching the ichthyosaur's jaws. And the monster dies, dragging Chain with him. Chain could drown. But Bear comes to the rescue and grabs the monster by the tail. Comes to the rescue of the huntress of the sea tribe. That attacks an ichthyosaur. 
Shane loses consciousness and regains consciousness on the beach. The huntress who helped Shane is named Alan and she's the best swimmer in the sea tribe. She killed the monster and pulled Shane to shore. She said that she had been a captive of a mountain tribe, into which she had fallen during a raid with her brother and others. Was locked in a cave and worked during the day. Brother helped her escape and told her to call for help. Brother attacked the guards. And Alagni grabbed the dagger, ran away. Saw Chain fighting the monster and helped him. The king of the sea tribe was pleased to see Alagni. And learned that members of his tribe are alive. That's when the signal tower to the west went up in flames. Something happened there. Shane suspected it was an attack by the mountain king. He told Shig to strengthen the defenses. And he ran to the camp. Took his faithful assistants with him. Yeah, yeah, I went with them, too. The queen he left as head of the tribe. Hiding, they saw the mountain king's men who were moving in the area where the traps stood. But the king sensed something and stopped before reaching the traps, challenging Chain to a duel. But first the challenge was accepted by the king of the sea tribe, who wanted to avenge his men. The battle between the enemies is about to begin. But the mountain king put up a weaker fighter for himself, who easily defeated Hei Hu. Ayun used a trap. But she didn't knock her opponent down. He did not feel the power of the trap. And the desperate battle continued. Alagni also joined the battle. And lured opponents into the water. But the fighter sailed well and Alagni's plan failed. The rookie tribe had no luck stopping the forwards. The mountain king's tribe is strong and bloodthirsty. They broke the traps. The rookie tribe was losing to superior enemy forces. And they have no more strength left. Chain entered the battle with his trusty battle axe. But the king of the hill tribe deftly parried his blows. The battle grew more and more intense. The newcomer tribe had a hard time. But into the battle entered Dida. Who began to fight the strongest warrior of the hill tribe. She wounded him with a dart. Xiong and Ayun realized they needed to return to camp and ask for reinforcements. The battle went on and on. No one wanted to give up. The king of the sea tribe wanted to drag the enemy into the water. But Alagni cried out to him. Which is dangerous in the water. Opponents fought hard. But neither could defeat the other. Two of the strongest fighters in the hill tribe battled several of the tribe's rookie defenders.